behaviors that destroy relationships. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, I wanted to talk about a couple of behaviors that could totally destroy your relationship. But as with everything, if you recognize these, make the adjustments, we can overcome any and all things that occur in a relationship. So let's talk about this thing, silent. This is, this is one I've seen a lot where when people get mad at each other, they don't speak. I've, I had someone even tell me this yesterday that they were debating on when they went home because they were mad at their partner on whether they were just going to go in the house, uh, take a bath and just go to bed and not speak to the person. That just amazes me when I hear stuff like that because I'm just like, how could you actually be in the same house with another individual and not speak? Something's wrong. And folks, this is not something that happens later. Uh, this is something that was happening during the, stating, during the dating stages. That's again, even the stuff I'm going to talk about here is, is I tell people, if you pay attention you see this stuff in advance. So it's not stuff that, you know, people will say they got side swap, uh, side swap. <laughs> That's a side, what is it? Shocked or whatever. But anyway, uh, uh, the word I was thinking of, but anyway, bottom line is they were surprised that it actually occurred. And I'm like, there were hints. You just chose to ignore them. Just like I talk about red flags. They're there. You just chose to ignore them. And we have to become very aware of that so we don't get caught in this. But anyway, the silent, you got to get good at actually, you know, we've talked about having a safe place in a relationship. If we have a safe place, then this should never take place. Because if there's something you've done or said that I don't agree with, because our relationship has a safe place, I can come and talk to you and we can get it resolved. That one kind of uh, reminds me, too, when um, I hear people all the time talking about um, a partner sleeps on the couch, because I've had people who used to ask me that. They're like, have you ever had to sleep on the couch? I said, you must be crazy. Why would I ever go sleep on a couch? It's one thing to watch TV and fall asleep, but you mean because I got told to go sleep on the couch? You must be crazy. I would never be in a relationship like that, because I tell people, think about it. What in the world has occurred in our relationship that we can't even be in the same bed? That just amazes me when I hear stuff. I mean, people do it. And if you're part of that, more power to you. But for me personally, I, that just amazes me. I'm like, we need to talk and get this resolved. Now, we shouldn't be going to bed angry to begin with. If there's something going on, uh, someone was telling me they had a friend that they were in the same house and, and, and they went like two weeks without speaking to each other. How do you do that? That's, ooh, that's too much stress. That's truly too much drama. I can't be in a home like that for me personally. So, but anyway, silent is very dangerous to me to a relationship because what it does, it tells you we don't have a relationship because we're not relating. You guys follow? If we silent... Where's the relating? We have to resolve that and be able to come and talk. I had a friend that, that uh, was very good at, instead of him responding quickly, he'll just go, okay, okay. And he'll wait to like the next day and then he'll come back to you, give himself a chance to think it through so he doesn't just say things um, that he may regret later. But that's still not a person that's being silent in terms of I ain't speaking to you. He just knows in order to make sure he doesn't say anything that he'll regret later, then he'll just he'll just say, you know what? Okay, I okay, I hear you, I hear you, and they'll get back to it the next day. But anyway, another behavior, storming out. Woo! This is kind of the same thing as the silent. I, I just don't get it. I mean, you gotta have a safe environment in your in your home. Why is a person storming out? Now, with that said. Because uh, most of the stuff is taught, as you guys know. It's, it's what we've watched, what we've seen in our parents. And, and, and most of you, if you think about what I just said, for most of you, you're probably 
just what I just said, you probably go, oh, oh my goodness, that is what went on in my house. So yes, because most of us duplicate what it is that we were brought up in. So that's the way your parents probably resolved issues. So that's what you see. One of them storms out when instead of them, again, having a conversation, this is the way they get it resolved is they just storm out. My thing is you, now for some people, after you have the conversation, if you have a person that's not open to changing, not open into hearing you, um, I understand when a person's just like, okay, I'm done. You know, um, I can see we're not getting anywhere. And that's kind of what I was going to talk about, uh, people fighting to be right. Um, that's kind of what happens here, you know, where you get people that's fighting to be right instead of doing what's right. They were the fight to be right. That's when you get some of that, too, where the people are storming out. And that was another behavior that we're talking about here, the fighting to be right instead of doing what's right. Um, they'll storm out. In that conversation, in that safe place, if you are a person that storms out and you realize this is something that you've learned, you have to be able to tell your partner, OK, I'll stop storming out. The trade off, because remember, this is a compromise. I need you to hear me out. And let's come to something that we can agree to. I agree not to walk out if you agree to actually have a conversation. You guys follow me? This is, again, where we work through this stuff. But the behavior itself is usually not healthy for a relationship. Because I know I had someone do that to me one time. They they had decided, back to the silent, they had decided they weren't going to speak to me. And, and they, they saw me and, and um, I didn't say anything. And they're like, it went on for about a day. And they they were like, Ron, man, I, I'm, you know, my feelings is hurt that you would go without speaking to me. I said, huh? I said, wait, wait, wait you didn't want to talk to me. And I said, so I'm a person that I'm not going to ever um, make you do something that you don't want to do. And so... If you don't want to speak to me, that is your choice. And I'm not going to make you change that. But again, that was before I understood the stuff that I understand now. Now I would go to that person, have a conversation and get it um, resolved. But back then, I was one of those people that, oh, you don't want to play that game with Ryan because I'll go without speaking to you. I ain't got a problem with it. I'd be like, well, you don't, you don't want to be my friend? I ain't got a problem with that. <laughs> I'm going about my day. I know that's tough. That's that's <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of rough. But I was. I, that was, I learned, folks. I learned. I learned. As you learn again, if you learn, and I talked about the four personalities. I had the technical side of me, so I can cut people off and I can cut things off instantly. I can. We could. We could depart as friends or whatever in a heartbeat. Didn't phase me. Um, but fortunately, I was in a relationship where I had a partner who relationship was their strong point and they started to teach me kind of what we're talking about here. You don't have to be right. You got to learn how to do what's right. You got to be able to understand people do have emotions. Sometimes things do affect people in a certain way and you got to be willing to have conversations, again, create the safe place and, and work through these things. But that was all a learning phase. But I'm telling you at first, man, I have to admit, I, I was I was kind of bad. I, I, I didn't have a problem with cutting you off. But anyway, attacking each other. That's another behavior. And by attacking, you know how you take little jabs at people. And um, those are dangerous because those little jabs, sometimes the littlest jabs is something that people will remember forever. And those little jabs add up to become a big jab. And then you wonder what happened in your relationship. And you go, man, I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I I, I, I treat them good. I talk. It's those little jabs, the little things that you did that started to add up. Be careful. Um, we already talked about the fighting to be with right, but here's one. Folks, don't do this. If you get in a conversation with your with your partner, do not go and vent to your friends and family. That amazes me. I'm like, think about this. You're going to tell your friends and family negatives about your partner. Then your partner has to come around your family and friends because you stayed with them. 
And then you look at your family and friends like they're wrong and they're bad people because they don't treat your partner the same anymore. Matter of fact, they kind of dislike your partner. Matter of fact, they don't even want your partner around. You created that. Quit venting to your friends and family what's going on in your relationship. You need to, that's why it's your relationship. You guys need to resolve it. Now, you can bring family and friends into the picture if you're leaving. <laughs> if this relationship is done, I'm finished. Oh, yeah, you can bring everybody in. Now, I'm out. I need y'all help to help me move and get my stuff out of here or whatever. That's something totally different. Quit running to friends and family and telling them your issues. Because they are going to hold that against your partner. And it's going to make it very uncomfortable for everyone whenever that partner is around. Um, comparing. Oh, this one is one that's, as I've said before, this is probably the largest destroyer to me in relationships. Is everyone wants to compare their partner to either other relationships or you're comparing your husband to other men or your wife to other women. And there lies the problem. I tell people that's where a lot of the cheating comes from and a lot of the... Uh, I, I like I said, a lot of problems in relationship. Your partner don't make enough money. All the different things. Most of that comes from comparing to other people and other relationships. If you stop doing that, you will figure out the challenges in your relationship and you guys will work together as a unit and get through them. But because you keep looking at other people, that's why, you know, uh, people get caught looking at social media. And you see nothing but the good on social media. And then you look at your relationship and go, my relationship doesn't compare to the stuff that I'm seeing. They're always traveling, this couple. They they just bought a new car. They got a new home. They, they were in the Bahamas. I mean, they're just, that may have been the only trip they've taken in the last 10 years. But you see somebody else and all of a sudden, everybody you know is on vacation. Okay, now all of a sudden you're comparing because you guys have been on a vacation for a while and you blaming your partner because if we didn't ha we don't have enough money to take a vacation or we haven't taken one in long. Folks, get out of the comparing business. Figure out what works for your relationship and you guys work together as a unit. Okay. And this one, missing the hints. Um I just had a conversation with someone where we talked about this and they said they were blindsided. That was the word I looked for earlier in the, in the video. I was, that's the one I was looking for, blindsided. The person said they were blindsided by the, the person breaking off the relationship. And I tell people all the time, it's very, 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 and I don't know how many times I need to say that word, rare that it's actually a blindside. If you're paying attention inside of your relationship, there are hints that are being given all the time. Um, I've had people that say, well, honey, what are we going to do this week? What are we going to do this week? What are we going to do this week? What? And this continues week after week and you do nothing. Your partner is letting you know, I'm bored. And if we're not doing anything, guess what they're going to do? They're going to look for a way to stop being bored. You guys know we talked about the, the six human needs. One of them is certainty, and that's when everything is the same. Okay, We need some of that in certain areas of our life. Uncertainty means variety. We need, we need some surprises. We need to go out and do something different. For me, that's what it messes up a lot of relationships is when everything is so certain. There is no variety because, and you'll hear that. People say, well, early in the relationship, we used to do stuff. Yeah, that was variety. Now that you're in a relationship, you stop doing stuff. Every weekend is the same thing. During the week, it's the same thing. That equals boredom. You got to bring uncertainty back into the relationship, which means we got to do something else. We got to add some spice to the relationship. Um, because if not, a lot of people, like I said, will end up going and doing stuff and it's out of total boredom. Now, we know you can figure it out inside your relationship and not have to go outside to do it. But that's where people get caught up. 
is your relationship ain't working. Someone at the job or someone you come across at the stores or wherever you go shopping or restaurants or whatever, and they're making you feel good and they're telling you things that they do and they get into. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, that just sounds like fun. It's like, because you could take what they told you and take it home and go do it with your partner. You guys follow? So you can handle that boredom inside your own relationship if you keep your eyes open and you don't have to go outside in order to do it. But again, that's a lot of what creates problems in relationship is it becomes stagnant. So what I'm saying is if your partner's giving you hints and the person I was talking to we were going through is they were saying that um, when they get into conversations, um, they kind of were very strong when the partner opposes, again, what we talked about too, the being right. They had their views. And if the partner shared their views, most of the time they shut them down. Or if they did let them speak, they would basically tell, basically pretty much make the partner feel like, but your view is wrong. I'm the only one that's right. My opinion is the one that's always right. Your perspective is just wrong. And the person kept telling them over and over through different, through different times, you don't listen to me. And eventually the person broke off with them. And then they said they were surprised. They were shocked. They were blindsided. Uh-uh. You weren't listening. Partner told you. You're not listening to me. I don't feel valued in this relationship. You guys follow? That's where I'm saying the hints. People give you hints. Participate in your relationship. And then make sure you make the adjustments. Because it's one thing to say, I hear you. Oh, I got you. I got you. But you don't make any adjustments. You might as well say it. I didn't hear you and I don't care. Because guess what? That's exactly the way the partner's going to feel if they don't see the adjustments. And it's like I've said before, if it's not against my beliefs, it doesn't cross my values, uh, doesn't mess with my integrity. Why not adjust? If you really care about your partner, as you say you do. Folks. What's the problem? So anyway, I just wanted to cover a couple of the behaviors, how you need to address these things. Again, as we keep talking about, you got to build that safe place inside your relationship where your partner knows they can come talk. Then we're not having silence and acting like we don't see each other. Uh, nobody's attacking the other one because that's, ooh, that's very dangerous because that's when people, like I said, you say stuff that you can't take back later. And then you wonder why, again, your partner is out because you can forgive them. And this is what, again, why I said everything can be overcome. People will say, you said something that scarred me. And I'm talking about a person on their way out the door. That's that attack I'm talking about. They'll say, remember when you said that? That totally scarred me. I lost my feelings for you at that, that moment. And the love just disappeared. And I just, I just never got it back. And so... I'd rather not live like this. That's why I'm out of here. All emotions. You guys know what I, I've shared the five steps. You got words. Those words turn into thoughts. Remember, those thoughts came from the words. And I'm talking about whatever language you're in. Um, and then those thoughts turn into stories because you put those thoughts together and they come into stories. Again, the stories came from the thoughts. But those stories will create an emotion. And then your actions will follow. And so if you, again, learn that process, use that process, you'll watch everything in your life as far as your relationship change because your emotions, remember that's number four. If I want to change my emotions, how did I get there? I got there because number three is stories. Let's go change the stories and let's get back on track, build that safe environment. And let's make this happen. And folks, hopefully uh, you, you take all these that I'm talking about and their behaviors in your relationship, address them so that I don't have to hear you later saying, remember when you talked about this? I lost my partner due to the fact that, just like I was sharing with that person, I, I, was, I was telling the person in advance, I kept telling them their stubbornness and that, and they didn't hear. But they needed the partner to walk out for them to wake up. That's not the time to figure it out. Let's look at what's going on now. 
make the adjustments. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you we talk on uh, Self Love Monday, I'll talk to you next Monday. For Relationship Thursday, I'll see you back here on uh, Thursday. And then uh, run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. You can see everything that I got going on. And folks, just remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Again, build a safe environment and you can overcome all these behavioral things because we can talk it through and be a, on one team as we're supposed to be. And we can walk through all the other challenges. All right. Talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.